that was in your permanent record, it's just taken away. It was a certificate of debt, and it was there. It was a certificate signed, and there it is. There's your record. And it says in verse 14, he canceled out the certificate of debt. There goes your permanent bad record. He canceled it out, consisting of decrees against us, and which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, and he nailed it to the cross. Amen. He literally took Amen. it and nailed it to the cross. Amen. He took your certificate, your permanent record, and all that junk, and he nailed it to the cross. Verse 15, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumph over them through him. Folks, here's what God did. He combined justice and mercy. God is just. God is merciful. So how do you combine them? He did it perfectly at Calvary. He upheld the demands of the law, yet he pardoned the sinners through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's what the benefit was. Look at verse 14 and 15 there again. We were dead in sin, and we have been made alive. In Christ. Amen. We were of the uncircumcised flesh, but now we are the circumcised heart. We were condemned, but now we're forgiven. There was a certificate of debt, and it was canceled and taken out of the way. And folks, we bear it no more. Now look at verse 15. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities. He made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Through him. How does that make you feel? How does verse 15 make you feel? It said Jesus made a public display of them. Do you, do you understand what that means? Because you ought to be jumping up and down and going, yeah, man, that was awesome. Because that's what Jesus did. How does it make us feel? Folks, our Jesus was mocked, spat upon, beaten, mistreated, kangaroo court, beaten within an inch of his life. On and on it went. He was mocked, crucified. Because of our sins, and he did all this at Calvary. And Satan was just a globe. Can you just imagine the look? Can you just imagine Satan when Jesus died on that cross? Can you just imagine him and his, de him and his demons gloating? We won. We're victorious. They were victorious and gloating, loud and proud. They had their moment. They literally had two days. They had a couple days. But here's the glory of it, Lord. Here's the glory of it, folks. And now they are the fools. Satan and the demons have become the fools because they've been disarmed. They have become the very mockery. And they are the losers because Christ is victorious. Amen. Amen. So the very ones who was mocking Jesus have now become the mockery because Jesus has won. He has conquered the grave. Amen. Amen. Close out this little bit, the scripture here. It says, Therefore, let no one act as your judge in regard to food or drink or to respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day, things which are a mere, there's that word, shadow of what is to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. All this stuff, he's saying, you know, all this stuff in religion, you know, they're, they're going to, there's a lot of legalism today, and they're going to try to put all this stuff on you. And Paul's saying, you know, there's all this junk. Don't let anyone judge you about what you eat or drink or, or how you do this or that and, and so on. Uh, because all these things are just a shadow of what was to come. And that was in the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, we're to live as Christ has desired for us. Jesus came to redeem us and save us for heaven, but also that we have that abundant life. And he wants us to experience true spiritual freedom. 
And folks, we live under the new covenant. We live under grace. We live as the regenerated, soul circumcised, born again children of God. Amen. Freedom is to be enjoyed. Freedom is to be enjoyed, but not to the point of sin. Praise God for what he's done for us. Let's, call, let's have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord God, for these words today, that, uh, the scripture that you have given us, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for the certificate of death that was held and had my name on it. And because of the redeeming work that you did at Calvary, that debt no longer hangs over us. And it's not that, not that we're just even delivered, Lord, but we're set free. We were delivered from the works of the enemy. And we've been set free to do the works of the Father. It's not that we've just been delivered, but we've been redeemed. We've been saved for a purpose. We've been called for a purpose. Every single child of God has a plan. Lord, you have a plan for our lives. And we've been called for your purpose. Father, I pray that we would really deeply understand how far you have reached, how far down, Jesus, you had to go. All the way to the depths of our sin. We can think about how dark and how deep that is. And Jesus, you went there so that we would be forgiven. And not only that we would, you would bring us back to where, okay, now we're, we're back to whatever normal would be. But you took care of the sins that were to come. You want us to live the abundant life, but you know that we're still going to mess up. But we, our sins, even the ones we haven't committed yet, have already been forgiven because of the cross. That, makes, that means I can live in complete freedom, knowing, Lord God, that, that my sins will not be held against me. Certainly it doesn't give me a free pass to just do anything I want. Certainly there are, there are circumstances, uh, there are uh, things that will happen, consequences. And that's true, too. But Lord, you have redeemed us and freed us and given us a true meaning of life. And I pray that we would understand and know that abundant life. That we can live and, and, and accomplish much for your purpose. Thank you, Jesus, for being such a victorious soldier. You are a great warrior. You're our Prince of Peace. You're our King of Kings. You're our Lord of Lords. You are our Redeemer, our Savior. We love you. You're our Messiah. We praise you today. And we just, uh, Lord, as we sing a song, just to close, if there's someone listening today, Lord God, that has never experienced uh, what real baptism is about or has never really circumcised or cut off the old self, or maybe they're living, they've added Christianity on, but they haven't got rid of the old. Lord, the circumcision is what being born again means. That we have cut off the old man, confessed our sins, and put our hope, faith, and trust in you, Jesus. I pray today, if there's anyone with an earshot that has not done that, today would be the day that they would in fact do that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's stand with us.
want to be standing here. I just want to, I don't like to lift people up, but this guy has put a lot of hours and a lot of time into get this Zoom set up and all, and he was here every Sunday in Tim's face with a camera, putting him on Facebook. I just want to say, brother, thank you. I love you and I appreciate you. And thank you for Amen. This guy was here the other night at midnight putting this live to make sure we could get on. And I tell you what, brother, we appreciate you and we love you and we thank you so much for everything that you do. I just wanted to lift you up a little bit this morning, brother. Thank it's you. Right. Uh, we went on and did Easter baskets because we didn't get to celebrate it. We had stuff left. And you can celebrate Jesus' resurrection anytime. Amen. Amen. So there's not many kids here, but they're, they're over in the... Fellowship Hall to pick up, and if you like, Aaliyah can pick up for her little boy, the Shermans for their little ones. Pick up for your grandchildren or neighbors. We have the stuff already there, and we want to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. So please pick them up. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, it can be so overwhelming when we stop and think that you would come down and live a perfect life a life of humility and to suffer all that you suffered for to be drugged through the streets and beaten and humiliated and nailed to a cross for a sinner like me Lord you did that for me you did that for all of us and all we have to do Lord is just accept that that, that, uh, that amazing grace and that mercy was meant for all of us but we have to recognize that as brother Tim said and then uh, and that's, that's the most important part, but then we, we follow through with all the other things, with baptism and everything. But that you would do that for us just, it just uh, humbles me so much, Lord. I thank you for that. I thank you for this church and what it means to me, Lord. Let us uh, always do things that will please you and um, get, out, get out in this community and do your work to further your kingdom. Bless us as we leave from here, Lord. I ask you to keep every soul here safe, be with all of our families, and uh, let this word get out today around the world, Lord, and affect others for Christ, that they may come into a, a saving knowledge and a relationship. We thank you, Lord, and we're uh, so glad to be here today. We praise you and honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good. It's just getting everything else to work. I put that other check in the till for the rest of it. I have your son's car out in the car. Oh, Deb. <laughs> Love you. There's the beetle. There's June's beetle. No, they're still using it.
Okay. All right there, Bethesda Community Church. And right now we're doing just Sunday service with our mask on, etc. at 1040 on Sundays. And um, by uh, telecommunications, Zoom Town, we're doing the Wednesday service and some other group things. God bless you and have a great day. June Gaiman Stevenson and John Stevenson travels with the Stevensons at Community Bethesda Community Church, our home church.